There is a big story circulating the sports gambling uh, world this morning. It actually started yesterday, and it was reaffirmed this morning. Um, but DraftKings is taking a very unique approach to dealing with what's been a, a headwind for the industry over the last few years, which is a ridiculously high tax rate in some of the biggest grossing states, the biggest culprit being New York with their absurd behemoth albatross of a 51% tax rate. Well, yesterday a story kind of got leaked um, or kind of got put out there in the, in the sphere that DraftKings was going to try to offset some of those taxes by taxing winning bets in those high tax states, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, I believe Illinois also on the list, Vermont, another one of those states with a ridiculously high tax rate. Well, obviously that was met with um, a, a lot of upset people. Uh, Twitter X was uh, up in arms yesterday, including me. I, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an atrocious uh, way to kind of pass through what has been a very expensive uh, venture for a lot of these sports books, which is operate in states with really high tax rates. I think there's a certain level of New York where the operators just have to admit defeat. You are not going to be profitable if there's a, a high tax rate. It's just, it's really hard. And obviously, we've now had two years of New York's um, market online, and the results have been I would say timid because of the ridiculously high tax rate. Well, what DraftKings is going to do is they are going to charge betters 3 to 5% on each winning bet. So what does that mean? Well, you make a bet. When you look at your ticket after the bet is made, you see what you risked and what your payout will be. Well, you'll still see that, but on the bottom line, kind of like a bill, when you get a hotel bill and you see like the service fee or the convenience fee or the the bed fee, whatever ridiculous fees they put on the, the hotel bills these days, you'll just see a line item on your ticket that says service charge or whatever tax, and it'll be 3 to 5% deducted from your winning ticket. So let's say you make a $100 bet at even odds, 100, 100 to win 100 It'll say 100 to win 97.50, 3.5% off of it, or 2.5% off of it, 3% would be 97. So that's kind of where we're at this morning. DraftKings CEO Jason Robbins, this is from uh, Ryan Butler, who does good, great work covering the industry for covers, tweeted that the CEO Jason Robbins reaffirmed, reaffirmed the strategy behind the winning bet tax on today's earning call, that the product, this is, this is where he lost me. The product is so good that betters will be willing to pay the three to five percent. That's when you hear that, you just kind of like, it's just like, you know, these big higher ups are making a ton of money. Just like, come on, dude. Like you're, you're, you're I feel like you're, you're out of touch with, with the, the, the common people here. It's like, for me personally, Jared, I only bet. I mean, I bet for fun, like twenty bucks. But now you're it, only going to win it, it, 18. It, yeah, it's like real, I'm getting taxed on that Yes, for a, a $40 win. Not you because you're in Nevada. But well, if you yeah, lived in New Jersey yeah. or if New York, you would. There, yeah. yeah. So yeah, And that, most that. people are like you. Hmm. Most people that bet on these sports books, the bigger box shops especially, I would, I would say 95 to 98% of, the, of the, you know, the people who bet are like Wyatt. 20 bucks, 50 bucks on a Sunday watching some games. It's not a significant amount of money, but for him to say that the product is so good, the product, for me, the product is only as good as the price. To me, price and product are the same thing. If your product is so good, ugh, it's, it's, it's a tough pill. And, and one of the many reasons I'm glad I don't live in New York anymore, it's a tough pill to swallow for the average Joe. That's where I think this is going to become. And to be fair to DraftKings, it might not be the only shop that does this. Right now, they are. We haven't heard from FanDuel yet. We might. August is their earnings call in a couple weeks. MGM Caesars, my guess is they won't because they have the land-based casino operations that FanDuel and DraftKings don't. I would be willing to bet that MGM and Caesars does not do this. But this is a big I would call it checkpoint 
to the sports betting experiment in America. It started in 2019. Basically, it was the Wild West. States were popping up. New Jersey technically went online at the middle part of 2018. Basically, right when PASPA was repealed. Credit to Chris Christie and his team. They were ready to go with that legislation right away in 2018. Then, obviously, the market kind of evolved a little bit. The first year was a was the Wild West, literally the Wild West. Then COVID hit, and I think COVID, frankly, was an accelerant to the sports betting industry. But once New York got activated, that was a massive day because it was one of the biggest states in our union, biggest city, number one market, finally opening its doors to this. And I remember when that story broke, the whole, the entire question revolving what was going to ha- was all around the tax rate. How much were these books going to be charged for operating in a state as premium as New York? And when we heard 51%, we're like, oh, man, that is not a sustainable business model. I don't know how these books are going to make money. Well, two years later, they haven't. And now they are passing that through to you, the average Joe Better. You're going to have to now, and this is going to start in January. You will have to pay this tax this football season, January 1st, 25. Good luck uh, being profitable. It's already hard enough to make money in this racket over the long haul. And let's be honest, you're watching this show, you're involved in this in this space, you're not betting for a weekend and then going away. Like, this is your lifestyle. This is what you do every day. Every day, this tax will continue to accumulate and add up. It will be met with one of the stiffest stiff arms in the history of, of, of you know, the public persona. People are not going to like this. And I don't know if it's going to make them change it, but People are not. There's not going to be one positive about this that I think from our sphere. I just don't see it being a positive thing at all. Yeah. Anytime you are taxing the the the, the common folk, it's kind of like the the argument about taxing for to build stadiums or renovating stadiums. I know the big thing in Vegas was the hotel tax. At least it wasn't for locals. It was for visitors coming in. But anytime you are just adding those little charges, it it adds up and starts to pee people off. It all adds up. And that's the juice is already punitive enough most days. I, I think the hardest thing for an average better to overcome is the juice because everybody likes to live in the prop market and the nerfy market, and those are expensive markets. They're derivative markets, a lot of them. So you're already paying a higher premium just to make the normal bets you want to make. Most people don't bet minus 110 sides and totals. Most people... The average Joe better likes to bet props. Props are already 15 cent splits. Well, now it's going to be 18 cent splits because you're paying a 3% tax uh, on every single bet. Um, big story this morning. You're going to continue to see this story evolve. And oh boy, when the calendar turns to 25 and people start getting these uh, these surcharges, right? Surge pricing, we call it when you're doing the Uber. It is. It is not going to be a very popular uh, situation for these books. But we'll see. Again, gambling continues to evolve here in this country, and this was another step in that direction. 